Now I wanted to show you how to add an extra detail by using vector assets that are already textured. So one way is to use those assets that you create by yourself. So we can, for example, bring back this scratchy texture that we created in Fresco. I'm going to recolor it to this hot pink so that you can see better. So you can, for example, create such textures in uh, Adobe Fresco, which you already know how to do, then export it as a PDF, sort it out, maybe merge it together, and you have your own scratchy organic textures. And then you can bring it into your symbol. And for example, let's take this smiley uh, cloud over here. So this is the, the body of the cloud. You can just bring and clip this scratchy texture inside. And now it's clipped inside and you will have texture <laughs> that is vector based. So if I change it to black, you can also, or to white, you will, you will see what I mean. Or blue. I just want you to uh, see it nicely on the camera, but I think you can see it pretty well. And the same with this texture here. Scribbles. You can also clip them to this body of the cloud. I'm going to change it to hot pink. And from the move tool, you can change its shape. You can also du make duplicates, make it... Um, What's it called? More dense, you see? <laughs> and now if you only wanted this texture to be visible, there's a neat little trick, which we will be also using together with uh, pixel brushes. So those textures here, I can group so that I can recolor them in a good way. And now if I make this invisible again, now, when we go to the body of the cloud, we can go to the fill tool and we can make the color of the body of the cloud the same color as our background. So right now we're still not choosing our colors. That's why it's this dull gray. But uh, then we can bring back the textures. Ta -da! <laughs> For example, we can recolor it to white. And then we can go to the eyes, the eye whites of the cloud, and we can make those pink. That's, this is from my Halloween colors, by the way. And we can do something like this. Maybe also recolor the eyelashes. And see if we also want to recolor this. We actually also have a third one that we created together in Adobe Fresco. This is an example of using self-made textures to clip to your vector base. This is option number one, and this is, this is one very psychedelic example. Now, in the resources, let's go back to our folder. I also uh, created a few textures that could uh, look like snow or they could look like uh, rain. For example, this can look like snow. You also have it in your resources. You can just click on insert. And we can switch off our jittery rain. And we can put this, uh, I called it scratchy dots. We can put this, see, it's like a texture that I also made with either Fresco or Procreate. I don't remember anymore. But it's done by me and it's very organic. It has all those speckles. And everything is vector based. You see, this is all vector shapes grouped together as one texture element. And then we can just zoop, make copies and use the snow throughout our pattern. I actually like this really a lot. Just to repeat, we can clip our uh, vector texture into shapes, but it, we can also use it outside. So when you're looking at the folder, have a look at all the other textures that I included. Those textures that you see here, they could be also clipped inside. For example, this is like a texture that is made with charcoal. We can see what's it going to look like when we clip it to, the, to this angry cloud. <laughs> Okay, so this is the original. When I clicked on it, it got selected. 
And now I call it fluffy base. I clip it to the shape of this angry cloud. Wow, so cool. You can make it smaller and then you can make copies or you can just make it bigger. Wow, this cloud is really angry. And I'm also changing here the, <laughs> the eyes into this hot pink. You can already do a little bit of recoloring, especially if you already know your color palette. But I also want you to see the changes that I'm doing on the video better. And then another texture that I have here is this one here. Let's maybe take it to this, put it into the symbol. It gets this orange line and we're going to clip it. Just put it inside of this cloud. Okay, that also looks interesting change the eyes to some pink. If we need more, we can resize it, make a copy, make another copy, make another copy, and maybe also group it so that we can recolor it more easily. Ah, and the body of the cloud, we can also change it to the color of the background. The same with this guy here. Hoppala. I think, yeah, I selected everything to be gray, but I have to select the body of the cloud, you see, and now, tsk. And also those detail elements, I will change it to the color of the background so that it looks as if it was cut out. And now this guy, let's also do something with him. Maybe this uh, scratchy texture that we created together in Adobe Fresco, we put it into the symbol. We clip, clip it inside of this cloud. And I would make it a little bit more dense. And with two fingers on my screen, I'm creating copies. Tuck, 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 tuck. As many as you need. It kind of imitates the feeling as if you were also coloring everything with a pencil. That actually looks pretty cool. And we can, of course, group everything so that we can recolor it better. I'm going to the body of the cloud and I'm changing it to the background color so that things kind of merge together. And I change the eyes to pink. <laughs> and this is our pattern. And this is our pattern tile. Okay, this is just an example. It looks a little bit wonky. But this is how we could add interest and texture by still not doing anything with pixels, sticking to vectors. The big advantage is the scalability and the ability to recolor everything super, super fast. I have another example of things that you can also buy. And again, I'm recommending uh, Frank and Toon Studio. Uh, we don't even know each other. <laughs> But I keep recommending him. I have like Garage Elements, Texture Pack Volume 2. I have some textures that I bought because I also love what he's doing. I think he's very talented, uh, the owner of uh, this studio. And if I buy brushes, it's usually from Frank and Toon. So it's an unpaid <laughs> promotion. But they have, for example, those grungy textures. For example, this one. It's beautiful. You can use it in the background of your pattern or you can clip it to your cloud. And they don't cost a lot. And as you know, if you would like to save some money, you can make your own textures or you can use the textures that you get from my classes. So this is the first scenario, building a pattern with vector assets textures. <laughs>